Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Lauk and today I will be recording play along tutorial for Polonaise in G minor by Frédéric Chopin, Opus Posthumus B1. What is cool about this piece? He composed it when he was seven years old, just seven years old. He didn't consider it to be a serious piece, so he didn't um, publish it um, during his lifetime, but it was published after he passed away. Uh, so some uh, details in the marking are probably missing, like petals, so we have to assume, just assume something, because Chopin just didn't mark it. Uh, and I also have to apologize for my diction today, because I got Invisalign, it affects my diction in a funky way, so my th, my th, <laughs> it almost sounds like more th. <laughs> so sorry about that, bear with me for today, I'll try my best. Before we're going to start, uh, we're going to look at measure 5, and nine. Oh, and by the way, you can find this piece on page 40 and 41 of uh, Book 7, Celebration Series by Royal Conservatory. So, um, look at with me at measure 5 and measure 9. What do you see there is this. It's very sweeping uh, arpeggio rolling up, okay? In order to execute it lightly and fast, we need to start to practice it slowly. So it starts with your left hand, with your pinky going on the low G. Then it's going octave up, another G. Then your right hand comes in and play the octave above that, G, B flat, and T. And while you're playing that, you have to pass your left hand under your right hand, not above. I mean, you could, but it's much more convenient when your pinky just come in under and you're going to be playing the G above that, then B flat and D, and then another G, B flat and D in the right hand. So it's going to be left, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, right, right. Okay, one more time. Left, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, right, right. And remember, while you're playing this in the left hand, don't just hang in there, just let it go immediately, because you have to move your hand. I would just practice this part first, so your pinky can pass quickly, and then I would add the rest, okay? Uh, so the same thing happens in measure 9. Also, you probably should practice this jump from the end of measure 4, which happens before chord, the D major chord, going into, yeah, so that means you cannot hang on for too long, I mean, you can, but your pedal, um, you have to kind of drop this chord and move, helping, uh, pedal will help you to carry the sound, okay, so same thing would happen in measure 8, and then measure 8 is more, even more difficult, because you have a larger jump to the left, so if you play measure, um, Eight, for example, one, in, two, and three, move, okay? So don't just stay there, right? But don't play too fast, so you still have to one, in, two, and three, and one, in, two, okay? So we're gonna uh, start with incredibly slow tempo. We're gonna take, if uh, the suggested tempo marking is 100 to 108, we're going to start as slow as quarter note 40, like more than two times slower, okay? Um, or eighth note, if it's easier, eighth note is going to be 80. That's that's going to be a little easier to, to keep track of, okay? And go ahead and play hands separately. I do recommend to start with the left hand first, okay? One and two and three. Two and 
you repeat the first part, right? So before we move on, before we move on, um, I've got to tell you some of the details to make your life either harder or easier, I'm not even sure. So look at the very first measure. So in the very first measure, your fingering needs to be on the first, in the right hand. It needs to be, just look at the suggested finger, it's going to be one, three, and five. And then do you see the slur uh, that connects the middle D into the D in the next chord? That means you, don't, you cannot repeat this D in the next chord. So you're going to basically connect it. So D still sounds, and then you play the next chord. So if your hand is still small, it, it might take you a while to adjust. Okay, so it might not happen immediately. And then same thing happens in the next measure. When your second finger holds on to D, D, C, do you hear the D still there? And then you play the B too, okay? Don't repeat D second time, right? So it's Also, make sure to lean on the first beat like this. One and second beat is going to be much much lighter so it's a this heavy big step in a polonis pa da pa da okay ah also if you look with me at measure 12 which is the end of the third line in this case <laughs> you might have a different edition so uh, you will see this da, 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 da. So what is going to happen, you're just going to play this ornamentation as two quarter notes. And if you look down in the score, you will see at the end of the page, on the left bottom corner, in this edition, you will see that it's a quarter and quarter. You're not going to play it as a... Right? You're going to play it one and a two and a three and a... Okay, enough talking, let's play it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna actually skip all the repeats. Even I'm even gonna skip the last so-called da capo al fin when you go to the, at the end of the second page, you just go uh, to the very beginning of the piece. That's how it's supposed to sound. But for now, for practicing purposes, I'm just gonna skip all of the repeats. But you're gonna take them after. We're probably gonna still play through them in a faster tempo after you feel comfortable on the slow one. Okay, one more time from the beginning, skipping all the repeats. Remember to hold on to the third finger in the first measure, right? Hold it, and then the second finger in the second measure. Okay. One and two and four. Two. One, two, and three. And one.
go to the very beginning because it's the cup of the night. I probably sped up during this performance. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but remember the most important part that's to keep your meter going, right? Because it's a dance and if your quarter note suddenly becomes shorter or <laughs> longer for some reason, so it just ruins the beat, it ruins it for the dancer. So keep the dancer dancing. So if you look with me at page 41, measure 23, the top of the page in this case, it's called trio, which is contrasting part. So if you listen to the first part, it's heroic. very noble, very heroic character, but more, much more lyrical in the middle, starting at measure 23. So what are you going to do? You're going to make sure your left hand stays very close to the keys and makes much more subtle sound than your right hand. Almost like, let's say, in the orchestra, the woodwinds playing too, 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 not boo, boo, not it's marked piano right so remember um, your melody has to always fly on top of the accompaniment right the accompaniment cannot bear the melody so make sure your right hand imagine it to be not as much as piano as let's say at least mezzo piano plus your left hand is going to be piano but your right hand is going to be mezzo piano plus so let's try one more time also uh, ornamentation measure 29 okay so if you listen to the uh, third beat, and if you look at the bottom of the page as well, actually, page 41, bottom left corner, you will see that there is a um, like deciphering of this ornamentation. So it's a turn, and you would play it G, uh, G, F, B, F, so it's a G, F, E, F. And I would recommend, I mean, it says there, starts with a four finger, so it's a four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, one, that's the next note, four, three, two, three, one, da, 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 ya, 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 da, 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 So after a while, after you get comfortable in the slow tempo, try to uh, move the tempo a little bit so you can, ya, da, 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 <clears throat> Let me play this measure several times for you so you can hear it. So first just start with left hand very slowly. That's your 16th note. So um, <laughs> three, me, and two, one, and Well, anyway, and then there is a repeat of this ornamentation, the same one in measure 37, close to the end of the page, when you have one knee and a two knee and a three knee and a four. After you feel more comfortable with a slow tempo, let's take it one more time from the top a little bit faster. Um, what else I'm going to recommend to you? Not so much pedal. So you start with a pedal. Pedal off. Pedal off. Then no pedal for the next. Just drive. Pedal on the last one. it okay and then you probably don't have that all of that without pedal again pedal here to help to connect just on the last beat of measures four and measure eight and I would also pedal on the end of measure 12 or just on the third beat beginning of 13 beginning of 14 and then you would have actually pedal on trio, starting in measure 23, pedal. Pedal every time. And actually 
twice pedal twice on the measure 24 pedal and pedal again change after the second beat to so change after the first beat and after the second beat because otherwise a little bit wonky and then again pedal Sorry for talking so long. Let me play it for you and you play along. If you feel comfortable, play probably right hand right now and then put hands together, okay? One and two and three and one. because it moves so much between um, registers and octaves so what is important is not to uh, have your fingers or have your um, hand pressed down on any note so don't hold on to them because you you do have to move a lot so just look with me for example at the measure 13 like the measure 13 to measure 22 uh, uh, when you have um, let's say Let's say we're going to take, for example, measure 18, 19, so the last line of this page. So look, one and two, so you cannot just stay there, because otherwise you're going to be late at one and up, okay? One and up and two. is to make sure after you take the chord don't just hold your hand back there it's much easier to move if you don't cling to the keyboard so play uh, your left hand in a light touch all those chords all the accompaniment in a lighter touch so like this almost like it would be 16th notes with the rest rather than Make sense. The same pra practice in 23. This kind of touch. In the right hand, again, what you have to make sure is this. So you don't stay on this certain place. You move together along with the melody. 
make sure not to stress the ending of the phrases, right? Don't play. It has to be. So this part is almost Mozartian. Not so much Chopin. It's here, especially. Try to remove the weight from the keyboard so you don't you don't press, you don't hold down. Okay, so let's see. I personally think that 100 is a too fast of the tempo. Let me see if it makes sense to... I think the 80 is actually a pretty good performance tempo. One, two, and one. say I, I, I don't know who put it there I'm not even sure that was Chopin because he was too young he might not mark it and Polonaise is such a such a native dance to Polish people so they probably knew instantly like it's bright tempo or not so anyway my personal thing was that 80s fine so let's try it 80 and we're gonna try it with the editors or I don't know who put it there, the marking upon it, but I personally think it's too fast. So I'm gonna start the metronome going like this. It's useful. <laughs> it's a little bit annoying. It's very useful for practicing. So you know you don't speed up or slow down. Okay? One and two and go. And one. to mention to you. So um, it's very important in this case and in many other cases to bring out the melody. So whenever you play the chord, make sure your pinky and your top, uh, your top lines, your top voices are sounding more prominent than the bottom. So your chord does not sound like this towards the first finger, right? It sounds because that's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear the middle voice because it's or like the so this much more important line okay let's try it one more time now I'm gonna <laughs> play the right notes okay. one and two and two Thank you. 
easy. So in, even in this sample, which is not the, not the entire marked performance sample. So what we're going to do, pardon me for screwing up the last uh, four bars. Let's start back on measure 31, which is after the double bar, double repeat, okay? One and two and three. One and two. Last two bars, okay? One and two and three. It was okay. Let's try it one more time. One and two and three. And one and two and three. So you see, even in 80, this ornament is pretty fast. And in my on my taste, all the ornaments they're supposed to be the part of the melody. So if they're too fast to understand they don't really make sense because they they just lose the taste it's, it becomes just boop, boop, just blur <laughs> so no blurbs i'd like it to be a part of the melody so if we spit it up up to 100 like suggested 100 uh, so in this case this ornament well it's still doable Let's give it a try. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and try to take all the repeats. And then you do da capo e fine, so that means when you're going back to the beginning. Um, instead of repeating the first uh, 12 bars twice, you're just gonna do it once after the repeat, okay? So at the, uh, when you start it first, you play the first 12 bars twice, uh, then you play uh, the next uh, 13 to th uh, 22 again twice. Then you play trio 23 to 31 again twice. Because <laughs> there is a repeat sign. So you basically repeat every section. Oh, I don't know if it's worth doing that. Well, in a fast tempo it probably does. But let's see. Let's see if I can do it in this fast tempo. Maybe I can't. One, two, and three. try and see if I can still do it. I, I think the 100 is too fast, in my opinion. I don't know whose marking is this. I think 80 is a good tempo for this one. But I'm give, gonna give it one more time to see if it's doable. One, two, three.
go back to the, the top of Alfine. You know, I think this tempo is too fast. I don't know what, what it's losing a little bit, I think. I'm not the native Polish and I'm not a dancer who would dance the Polonaise, but I think it losing a little bit of dignity in this tempo. 80 is fine. Really. <laughs> My personal opinion. Well, good luck with this one. Um, so after you, you've done every single practicing tip I gave you, uh, remember to go back to the slow tempo to get more details, okay? And remember the contrast between the heroic first part and the trio, which is much more lyrical, much more gentle in the sound. Well, good luck. I hope to hear you playing this piece.